Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. As you can see from the title, this is um, a mixed match of uh, all sorts today, uh, trying to combine lots of things. It's, well, it's still early at the moment, but it's early Sunday morning, so part of this is the Sunday morning chat, but there won't be quite so much of that in this video, not this time round. Uh, the Everything in Bloom on the 8th is now today, which is the 9th, because <laughs> I was at the Christmas do yesterday, which uh, turned out great fun. Um, <clears throat> nice meal, um, quite a nice display of plants, um, but display only, no competitive element. Um, there was one plant there, a lovely cat there, um, but it had colour break on the um, petals and sepals and um, it was a large discussion. Many said, oh that's thrips and um, I probably 80-90% agreed that that's what it looked like. Um, now it may be that the plant was then treated and the thrips have gone but the damage is already done. They, they are a nuisance pest to get rid of, they really are. Um, and <clears throat> they come in many life stages, the last one being a flying insect, basically, but those are quite short-lived. And in that stage, they're quite easy to kill, but the larval stages will be right down in the media. Um, they can even be on the bottom of the pot. You know, they, 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 they've got many life stages, and those are not so easy to deal with. Um, but they can burrow inside buds and then when the buds open the damage is already done and it shows as discoloration, sometimes little holes. Um, they, they are a nuisance and um, in bad infestations they'll damage the leaves, pseudo bulbs, they'll get at the roots. They, they are a nuisance. Um, I don't think I've ever had them or if I had you know, there were so low numbers that they just got decked with one of my normal treatments. Um, but anyway, the other... <laughs> my view was when I looked at it, um, I could see no actual thrips. <clears throat> so I was more worried that that was actually a virus plant and the colour break was, you know, one of the signs. Um, Anyway, good debate on a plant. <laughs> the guy whose plant it was insisted it's not thrips, I haven't got thrips, it's definitely not thrips. And everybody else said, well, yes, it is, mate. <laughs> oh, I love those sort of discussions. Um, but yeah, there's some nice plants on display. Um, it was a very nice um, Cilogeny fimbri fimbriata, probably had about 30 blooms on it. Yeah, nice plant. Um, and various other things, and you know, quite a lot of discussions about the various things, about what people like and what they don't like. There was one catvia there that had lovely blooms on it, but nobody liked them. The colour combination just didn't work very well, and that does happen sometimes. I find it happens more with catvias than anything. The hybridisation process just produces some very odd things, if you know what I mean. Um, it was a sort of creamy colour um, with perhaps heading towards a bit of yellow. It had some spotting on it but it had a deep red lip that that was just too much of a contrast if you know what I mean. There was no blending of the colours. It didn't seem to work very well and lots of people agreed um, but um, you know everybody has their own taste and sometimes just getting some blooms is all, is all you want. <laughs> anyway, we're going to start off with the new pots. Um, I did put a link to the um, eBay site, uh, if anybody was interested. I'll, I'll do it again. I'll put the link to the eBay site in the description of this video. But they've turned up. Now, these were ordered... Uh, I've written the date down. It's early in the day. Um, these were ordered on the 22nd of November from the Far East sort of China, Taiwan, Thailand, somewhere out there anyway, seems to be, um, I think they were sold by a company in China, but they originated from another country nearby or somewhere out that way, a long way. So I think I said at the time, they'll be on a slow boat from China. Um, they arrived on the 7th of December. So yes, that is quite a long delivery time, but if you're not in a hurry, so what? And the postage was free. You know, you can buy one and still get free postage halfway across the world. So I, I think that's pretty good going. Anyway, they're here. I thought we'd have a look at them. Um, these, this is the largest size. 
These are incredibly sturdy. There is nothing flimsy about that. They've got a very large rim to them, which means you could um, attach hangers. They've got a good lip to the rim, so you could attach those hangers with the clips, or you could make some holes in the rim and attach your own wires. So they will hang very well. <clears throat> the slats are rather large. Um, you know, you, you couldn't fill that with small bark because it would go straight out the holes. Um, but you could line it with some moss or something else, or, you know, sort of uh, hanging basket liner or something. But that's the largest size. Um, on the website, they do actually give all the measurements. So they give the measurement from there to there, from there to there, and from the top to the bottom. So you do get a good description of everything. So I bought three of the largest and three of the sort of medium sized ones. And um, again, the slats are quite large. So, you know, you know, you'd have to go careful what you put in there or, or it would go straight out the bottom. Um, but nonetheless, I think I can find some uses for those. I bought these really to see what they were like. Um, <clears throat> they've got some strange pricing on there because um, some of the larger ones are cheaper than some of the smaller ones <laughs> and several of the sizes are the same price so that you know um, but they've got one of these um, you know drop downs that you know you choose the size you want and how many you want and then place your order um, you get a discount if you buy three which is why I bought three of each um, these were 150 each yeah with a discount for buying three. It's only a small discount, but you know, it's a discount. And these were 250. So they're, I think they're quite well priced. And they're certainly very, very strong. Isn't, as I say, there's nothing flimsy about them at all. So um, yeah, that's the pots. And um, <clears throat> the next bit of the video, I'm just waiting for a bit better light. But we have a, we don't have an unboxing, we have an unpacking. So it's not ice cream, <laughs> it's actually plants, um, but I'm going to wait for the light to get a little bit better. But a little clue is the spike hanging out the side. Um, so we've got some new plants to look at next. I'll be back. Okay, let's have a look and see what flavour ice cream we've got. <laughs> this is a new batch of Tolumnias. So let's see what we've got. Um, this one's in spike with a kink. Um, those roots are dry, they need dealing with. Um, I've got no way of hanging this up, but we do. This came from um, Orchid Diffusion, which I think is a French nursery. I've got some from this place uh, in you know my original collection, and the giveaway is the quite nice tags that they actually provide, which has got a picture. <laughs> now, this could be nothing more than an unregistered hybrid because it's Tolumnia Mo 01. So it's difficult to say what this is. Um, but one thing I do know is it's got a spike. It looks like it's going to have quite a few blooms on if I can keep it still. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight or nine buds on that spike pushing on, and it may well branch. Um, but these are dry, they're a bit dehydrated, and I mean that is not what I'd call a brilliant root system for a Tolumnia that size, but it's a single fan at the moment, so that's going to take a bit of growing. Um, that's just going to, I've got some <coughs> feed here, <laughs> so the whole lot's going in there. They need to soak, basically, they need to hydrate. Right, let's look and see what else we've got. Right. Again, dry roots, but this one's got a new fan starting. And this one is Jarak Rainbow Soft Pink. So this has got a proper name. Um, this one is probably going to pull on quite quickly because looking at the base of that new fan, it's starting to grow some new fatter roots. Um, <clears throat> so that one should pull on. Um, it's got The thing is with Tolumnia roots, they do often look desiccated, but... <sighs> They plump up, and it's not very often you see that with an actual root system. But where they grow, these are, well, I think the expression they use is twig epiphytes. So they are epiphytes, but they don't, they're not very often found on actual trees. They're found on low, shrubby, sort of bushes, 
and they tend to just hang on to the twigs and um, the roots run along un underneath the twigs a lot of the time because it keeps the roots out of the sun. Um, a lot of these get a lot of sun um, but they do get good humidity. They all come from around the Caribbean basin so on the islands and around the coastline of that area. So they've always got sea breezes. So um, anyway, we've got a new fan coming on that one. Get that in to soak. Ugh. Next. So I think there's, there's either five or six in here. I can't remember now. And the tags are all tangled up. Let's do the bare root one and get... <laughs> Hang on. We have some knots to untangle. Ah, that one came out. Ooh, that one came out. <laughs> Literally came out, didn't it? I'm going to pop it back in there for now. Um, now this one has a fan and a young fan and the leaves have been knocked about a bit on this one. You can see some damage on there. It's not bug damage, I believe. It's just uh, bashing around type damage. And this is um, Tolumnia Jarak Firm Brown Brush. Um, now I've got pink brush somewhere I think unless it's one of the ones I lost um, but anyway that looks quite attractive and again very dry so we'll get that one into soak as well so I'm soaking old blinking plants they you know they can just sit there and soak for a bit get hydrated and fed at the same time the lady who was looking after these for me has had them a while and um, she said all I've done is water them oh we have another spike Yippee, so another one in spike. Um, this is a good fan with another growth with a spike on a very young growth. Um, not that good a root system on that one. And this one is, oh, it's another one of these with a, it's effectively, I think this is just going to end up being a hybrid. This is Tolumnia Mo 04. So we've got 01 and 04 now. Um, but that's not a bad plant, that's a good strong fan and a new growth with a spike. I'm surprised that growth that size is actually spiking. But, um, yeah, so what was that? That was uh, one, two, three, that's four. <laughs> You're wondering why I don't know how many I got. Well, I don't, <laughs> but it's five. We can see now, we're down to the last one. And um, this one is Jarak Firm Hickory. Well, that looks like it's got some interesting colours on that. That looks like it opens probably in a red colour with creamy yellow sort of, you know, background to it. But there's a purple tinge to that as well. So if it comes out true to the picture, great. Now, it's difficult to tell with Tolumnias whether you've got a really young fan or you've got one that's going to be a miniature. It's difficult to tell. But that, um, that's not going into soak till I've got rid of that leaf. That leaf showing signs of um, wet rot. So that needs to come off. And I certainly don't want it in that bowl of water because that bowl of water is about to get used to uh, feed and water the holy clay pots. So we'll, uh, we'll leave that one out for now. But that looks quite attractive. So uh, five new Tolumnias to add to the collection, most of which live up there at the moment. Um, so you can sort of see that once a Tolumnia sort of gets a hold and starts to grow, it has a plump, fleshy look to those leaves um, and a good colour to them and everything. And they produce extensive root systems. Um, so, you know, you can tell once your plant's doing well, just literally by the sheer number of roots it chucks out. And as they progress and become more mature, they'll grow multiple fans at once. Instead of just pushing out one new fan, you'll get two or three. And they can even push out a new growth from one of the older fans. So they do bush up over time. Um, so that's the Tolumnias. New plants. Um, that will obviously be a mammoth mounting session. So a kitchen time to come. Possibly tomorrow, maybe the day after. Depends what else I've got on. But... Um, yeah, I'll do them all at once, but they'll all get mounted. Um, my Tolumnias seem to do well mounted, and like I've always said, if it's not broke, don't fix it. This is the only actual one I've got in bloom at the moment, and the blooms are just about to go, but underneath these original blooms are the branches. So we've got one branch here with three, three buds on, one's about to open, and another branch here pushing on. 
Um, so that one's going to branch and re-bloom on the same spike. Don't cut your telumnia spikes until you're absolutely sure. They'll go a sort of strawy brown colour as they die back. Once they've done that, they're not going to bloom again. But while they're still in their original colour, they can branch. They can branch quite far back as well. And some do it more than others. Uh, I mean, I've got some that just, you know, they bloomed a couple of times and never branched, and others that always do. This is, this is one that always does. So, uh, and there's one other spike up there that's pushing up to the sky at the moment. It's, it's the, out of the telumnias, because I, I know this is a silhouette, it's the, it's the one that's in centre shot now, and the spike goes up past the Arengus towards, <laughs> towards the ceiling, the roof. <laughs> so it's going to be a long spike, that one. Um, okay, so some new telumnias to get uh, mounted and set up. Okay, the next part of this video would normally be done as a separate entity, um, everything in bloom on the 8th, but as I was at a Christmas party yesterday, it's now the 9th. Um, so we'll just go round everything in bloom and um, a, a pretty quick chat about each one. Um, I'm not getting plants out from where they are, so there might be some stretching and there might even be a couple of silhouettes, but uh, so they're getting filmed in situ, as they say. This is quite interesting because every day when I come out, there's one of those on the floor, <laughs> and effectively it's the vanda that's going over. Um, they opened around a day apart, so that's the rate of decline of the spike, basically. So we've probably got another week maybe two weeks it might it might last that long but it's been open a very long time it's put on a fantastic show on this spike um no complaints whatsoever um this vanda i absolutely adore um, this one's going nowhere um blooms are absolutely enormous i love the tessellation the patterning deep purple lip gorgeous blooms and and it's it's a pretty good strong plant so that's uh, Vanda number one, and this is Vanda number two, and it's, it's right up the back at the moment, so it is quite difficult to film, but I think I've got the camera a suitable angle, <laughs> surrounded by leaves from other plants, to actually see without getting too much of a silhouette. Effectively, once the blooms have been open for a while, they turn almost pure white, and they've got that lovely, very silvery grey tessellation to the, uh, to the petals and sepals. And a, a sort of mid lilac purple lip with a yellow sort of centre. So it is quite attractive in a simplistic way. Um, but again, I don't think that's going to be around too much longer. Now this little uh, Catlia is hanging in there an awful long time. That's Cattleya little lemon drops cross with um, Encyclia vetulina, and uh, it's a winter bloom, also a first time bloomer, but the bloom is lasting an absolute age. It opened quite a bright yellow, and then over a few weeks, not quickly, it faded to that more orangey colour, but um, it's been open a long time, it's lasting well. My Oncidium Sotoannum, the blooms are not long for this world now. Um, you can see, I mean, these drop at a colossal rate. There's always a puddle of them on the floor down here. <laughs> you have to clear up at some point. Um, but a lot of these spikes have completely gone. There's a few odd blooms hanging in there. Um, this spike, I believe, was the latest to actually open. These might last a little bit longer, but it's not long for this world. But again, it's, it's bloom. Well, it was in bloom when I got it, and the blooms have lasted well. Um, now it's a matter of um, looking for new growths. I know I've got at least one good one starting, um, but with a plant that large and all of the latest growths matured together, which produced a mass blooming, it's probably this time round going to push up new growths at different times. But it should push up quite a lot. It's a strong plant, um, vigorous plant too. So uh, hopefully loads of new growths on that one coming soon. Uh, one's already started. So uh, as the blooms drop and the spikes get cut, 
um, the plant seems to trigger that it didn't successfully make seed, must have more new growths. Um, some plants can take quite a while before that happens. It's almost as though they're having a bit of a rest after blooming. Um, and some of them start the new growths before the blooms are even gone, you know, so uh, it varies. I've got one Mazda Valia out, which is um, a lovely little bloom, I must admit. Um, that is Mazda Valia Decuman crossed with um, Viciana. It's actually been registered. It's called Copper Wing. Um, the patterning on that comes from the Decuman and um, some of the coloration from Viciana is in there. <laughs> And showered with sotoannum blooms at the moment. That one went in the air. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, there's another bud coming on that one up here next to the uh, Dracula bud, which hopefully will open this time round. Um, I've got three Tolumnias open at the moment. Sorry, Tolumnias on the brain. Ristrepias. I know what I mean, even if, even if it's not what I say. I'm not getting the plants out, but that one there, that has got one, two, three, four, five blooms on at the moment, but the others are around the back of the plant. Um, they, these are large. As Restrepia blooms go, this is quite large. Um, the other two that are open look incredibly similar. This one has got, well, probably a dozen or more blooms on at the moment. Lovely little splash of colour, but quite tiny. And then the one next to it, which is a single bloom at the moment, is is almost the same colours but quite a bit larger so uh, I'll do pop-ups for names because I, I can't get in there to get at the tags at the moment so that's all there is in that area oh stop staying bent for a long time doesn't do me back any good right the Deesa the last Deesa bloom is about to drop so that'll be the end of Deesa Cuensis for this year and then the three potfuls have got quite a few younger plants that have pushed on this year. Hopefully they will bloom next year. And hopefully we don't get a heat wave and deck the blooms as fast as they opened. Um, this little Latoria is blooming its head off. And um, this one opened beginning of October, I believe. And it's still going strong. And this one is... So I've got three open at the moment and one of them, well two of them, I always get in a muddle because they look so similar. This one is a primary cross, Polysema crossed with Aberans. And Aberans gets around a bit in the Latoria hybrids. <laughs> it appears many times in many different crosses. Um, not the most spectacular bloom, but good weight of numbers this time round one two three four five six seven spikes all at the same time can't really complain about that this is quite a mature plant so you know that and it's in a state now where every single new growth that matures that doesn't lose its leaves in the heat wave believe it or not those three at the back were new growths I've lost the ability for those to bloom, I suspect. That just did not... It didn't mind the heat so much, but it didn't like the lower humidity with that heat because I couldn't keep up. And that was over a prolonged period. For short periods, it probably wouldn't have mattered. But yeah, very attractive blooms looking at it from the back. And there's nothing more down there. <clears throat> nothing more down there. Let's get Mr Ugly out of the way. It does seem to be greening up a bit. Certainly not chucked out any more leaves lately though. Right, starting down here then, we've got this beautiful Cilogeny. This is Moriana Magnifica. Uh, it's all in the name, you know. I mean, that is just a gorgeous bloom, but only the one. Now, I thought there were going to be some more buds on that spike, but there aren't. That's a poor spike. This, this should have five or six blooms on a good spike. The other new growth here is Blind. And there's another one pushing up around the back that may or may not spike. So this is not a good blooming. Um, again, this did not like the heat wave. This is a drinker um, and it needs a good root system under it to be able to keep it hydrated enough to let it bloom well. But as you can see, uh, each new growth does produce new roots. 
So I've got three new growths at the moment. That's three new sets of roots pushing down in the pot. And it, it could still push out some more new growths. Some of last year's growths haven't produced a new growth yet. So this could still clump up quite a bit as time goes on. That's that one. Uh, coming up here, we've already had a look at the little Tolumnia. Um, oh, that's got a long name, that one. Something like... Oh, I'll put a pop-up. <laughs> if I try and remember it, I'll probably get it wrong. And then coming around here, we have this lovely little Phalaenopsis. I really do like that. That has got to be very close to a species, given its shape and its coloration and its patterning and its size. I suspect that's close to a species. Um, I left the spike on here and it started to die back, but then it did branch and bloomed again and it looks like it's going to branch again and the original spike up here is extending so it's one of those that the spike should keep going for some considerable time providing it gets watered and fed suitably of course um, Catlia cernua looking good and um, I am really glad I didn't take that to uh, yesterday's Christmas do for everybody to have a look at the room that the meal was in, where the plants were, was very warm, very warm, and a very dry atmosphere. If I'd taken that in, I may well have lost those blooms, so I'm glad it didn't go. However, next Saturday, or this Saturday coming, um, is another Christmas due for the other Orchid Society. These blooms only last two to three weeks. So by the time we get to that do, they'll be coming towards the end of their life and I may take it in because we've all had a good look at it. It's been a really good show. It's been filmed enough, hasn't it? <laughs> so that's that one. Um, the Dendrobium conico is still in bloom and still looking good. Now that's a cross between Goldschmittianum and Victoria Regina. Um, and they're lasting well, very pleased with that. And in this light, I think the camera is reproducing that colour pretty accurately. It seems that some reds the cameras won't have, and it depends on what light they're in when you try and film them. And when you head towards what some people would say is blue, which it isn't, but as you head towards those shades, cameras can often render that badly. You don't very often get a picture or a video showing Victoria Regin Regina in its true colours. You really do have to see that one for real to really appreciate the colours on it. But lasting well, that one. <laughs> and this little one's still hanging in there. I do not believe it. Again, this, this, this opened quite a long time ago. This is the second spike though. In my notes, I always um, put the date that the first bloom opened. Well, that first bloom would have been on this spike that's actually been over some time now. So it's giving a false impression of how long it lasts. But nonetheless, last bloom will be gone soon. And that's another one with a long name. That's got little lemon drops in it. And it's crossed with um, Catlatonia Why Not. I think the easiest way to remember that one is just Why Not. <laughs> and the uh, big blousy Catlia with the most gorgeous freesia fragrance the original spike up the back there with the four blooms is still okay. I still don't see any signs of those blooms going over. And the latest spike with three blooms. So to get two spikes, both new growths consecutive this year. So this new growth follows up to that spike. And then as this growth was up to about here, it started yet another one, which has also bloomed. So both of those are this year's growth, but they're on the same lead. It's not growing in two directions, and as you can see, that is swelling like anything at the base here, and that's going to produce at least one new growth, and I've got a feeling that one will as well. So the front end of this plant is, is pushing on hard at the moment, so uh, that's that one. Moving round. Sorry, I'm just backtracking here to make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh, there's two gorgeous buds I can't wait to film, but they're not open yet. <laughs> they're going to be pretty special. Oh, nearly missed the little Sophronitis. I can just about get this out. This is a Maxillaria Sophronitis, Sophronites, I believe. And it blooms on and off. 
Lovely little delicate red blooms with a yellow center. Well, it's ready orange, really. You can't really say that's red. But um, this just blooms on and off when it feels like it. Um, as it matures a bulb, it sends up new growths, often two per bulb, so it does bush up. And then once those new growths start, the bulb that they were produced from tends to bloom. Now, that just seems to be its pattern. Um, lovely little plant. Um, give that another couple of years, that's going to be a bush, not a plant. <laughs> but it blooms regularly. It does have little quiet periods when it's not in bloom, but not for long when it starts again. So a nice little continuous bloomer almost. Um, all right, check in, check in, check in. Nope, we're down to the last few now. And then we've got a surprise, a new first time bloomer. The little, um, this is Twinkle crossed back with Soto Annum. And it does have a proper registered name, this one. And there seem to be a few of these getting about now. Um, Siku Marguerite Chiansi Glory. That's what this one's been registered as anyway. But it's a twinkle crossed back with um, Oncidium Sotoanum, which is one of the parents of the twinkles. So uh, lovely blooms and um, nice delicate pink with, you know, bright yellowy orange in the centre. So a very attractive bloom. Small, but nonetheless there's quite a few more spikes to open up as uh, time progresses. Right, coming around here, we've got my... Dendrobium rhodostictum. Well, this spike is fully open now. Love these blooms. They're simple. So they're effectively white with very subtle greenish tinges down near the base of the petals and sepals. And then the lip itself has strong purple colouring on the outside of the lip. Yes? But inside the lip, it's like a see through. Colour isn't really there, it's showing through from on the outside, but then it does have its lovely veining down in the centre of the lip. And um, the other spike on one of the old leafless canes is just opening now. That's a surprise, I didn't expect it to do that. <laughs> and this little one over here is just going over now, but I mean this has been open since the beginning of October, so you can't really complain. And the latest two growth both bloom together, and um, I, it's not a strong plant, it's still relatively young. And that's Dendrobium Nora Tokanaga cross with Aberans again. I said it gets about, didn't I? Again, it has that Aberans look. But on these blooms, there's virtually no purple patterning on the front of the plant. But as the blooms age, you get lovely green veining on the lip, which is quite attractive. The patterning, as with a lot of Latorias, is on the back of the blooms, where you nearly always get spotty, stripy, purpley patterns. Or well, certainly if Aberans is in there anyway. But these aren't going to last much longer. They're starting to drop now. So uh, coming to a close. But it's done well. Regular bloomer. Even though that doesn't look like it's had many chances to bloom, it actually blooms on every growth. Uh, as does the um, rhodostictum. First time the rhodostictum ever bloomed, it had one bloom. Then the next spike on the next growth had two, then three. Now we've got four and two on an old cane. So this plant, although it doesn't look much, is getting stronger all the time. And then the last one, we have a first time bloomer. Now, this was a bit of a surprise because I didn't realise those buds were close to opening. And then I just came in and, and there they are. And this is a tetragonum, I think it is. I always have to look. <laughs> yes, Dendrobium tetragonum variety giganteum. And for the size of the plant, this has got a good progression, this plant. You can see very young, tiny little pseudo bulb. So I would say this has definitely been grown on from a seedling bulbs slowly but surely getting larger until the latest growth, ooh, this one up the top, is now blooming size. So in theory, all subsequent new growths will now bloom. And they are attractive. Lovely shade of green, very spidery looking, unusual for a dendrobium. 
You know, that is not your typical dendrobium shape, not by any means. Its giveaway, quite honestly, is looking at the blooms from the side. Nearly all dendrobiums have that sort of hook shape at the back of the bloom. That's probably a nectar pool. Um, but yeah, lovely little white lip. Um, this may well be fragrant, and given those colours, it could be night scented. But it's only just opened. I mean, this bloom isn't even fully open yet. But I'm pleased with that, very, very pleased with that. As dendrobiums go, that's the only one I've got that's anything like that shape. So it almost looks like a brassier. Lovely. Okay, so that's the everything in bloom bit. And um, I've got a couple other, other bits to film as I go along. But um, yeah, so a uh, bit of a mix this video. And it, this may be the end. It depends what else I find when I'm looking around. Um, during the rest of today, um, some watering to do and stuff. But um, if it is the end, then uh, I'll see you next time. And a subtle reminder, my channel is not for progressing your religious views on. Please keep them to yourself. We can do love and peace, but well, that's about as far as we can go. If you wish to promote your religious views, keep them to your own channel. And um, keep them away from mine, please. Yes? Just a subtle reminder, and um, that's how I want to keep it. It's an orchid channel, primarily, although we do digress into a bit of music now and again. <laughs> but you know what I mean, those sort of things are um, for, there are sp specific channels that like that sort of thing, and if you do, then be on those channels. But um, I'm not fussed on having all that sort of stuff around my channel, if you please. So, polite reminder. And, um, yeah, if I don't film anything else today, I'll see you next time. And next time is probably going to be mounting that uh, new batch of telumnias um, once they finish soaking and hydrating properly. You know me, I always add a bit on. I forgot to say that um, the gadget to turn this camcorder into a webcam, I've now got one on eBay, so that should uh, arrive sometime later this week I presume, next week sorry, um, and then we can see how all that goes together. The downside is I put bids in on a lot of them. Now luckily quite a few of them have now been outbid but I've still got a couple of bids so I might end up with several but at the price they go for I can just turn them around and resell them and, and, and just keep the best one basically but it's on its way so we should be a in a position to see how good this camera can work as a webcam and uh, then we can think about doing some live broadcasts with a bit, bit more quality in there perhaps than uh, last time round. See you next time!